A warm welcome to the third lecture on the subject of digital signal processing and its applications. Let us take a couple of minutes to review what we did in the previous lecture. In the previous lecture, we had initiated our discussion on sampling. We had tried to answer the question, when can we retain information even after sampling? To expand a little bit, when can we consider values of a signal only at sampling instants and yet not create any confusion or not lose information? We had not completed our answer to that question. We had only got thus far and we shall now summarize that. So, let us put down the theme of our lecture today, reconstruction from sampling, or from samples to be more appropriate, aliasing, and discrete system. This is the theme of our lecture today. Well, what we had seen the last time is that if you have an original sinusoid of frequency 0.1 kilohertz, and if you have a sampling rate of 1 kilohertz, then you land up with a confusion of sine waves. And the confusion is as follows. On the kilohertz scale, the samples could have come either from a 0.1 kilohertz frequency or from a 1.1 or a 0.9 kilohertz frequency and of course, if the amplitude of this is A naught and the phase phi naught, the amplitude of this is A naught phase phi naught, the amplitude of this A naught phase minus phi naught, the amplitude of this at 2.1 is A naught phase phi naught and we can keep doing this amplitude A naught phase minus phi naught, we can continue. So, at every multiple of 2 kilohertz, we have these confusing sine waves, if you want to call them that, which contribute to the same samples. Now, I want to say a little more about this observation. You see, what we had shown in the previous lecture was that all these sine waves generated the same samples at those instants. However, we need to show something more. We need to show that if I indeed add up these sine waves, as I have shown here with amplitudes A naught and phase either phi naught or minus phi naught depending on whether it is after the sampling frequency or before. If I add up all these sine waves, I generate what I really call a train of samples. And what do you mean by a train of samples? In fact, this is a challenge which I put before you. It is a practice that I follow in courses that I teach to challenge your imagination right from the beginning, to put before you exercises which will make you think and work certain things out on your own, so that you get a much better grasp of the ideas that are being taught. And we are beginning with the first challenge. Take the 
these sine waves and add them one by one. What I mean by that is, take the sum a naught cos omega naught n t plus phi naught. Or in fact, let us not sample, you know. At n t of course, you will get infinity, there is nothing much to be seen. But let us instead add up the continuous. So, you know, we should say not the sinusoids at the samples, but sinusoids the continuous sinusoids. So, 2 pi by t as we would have it minus omega naught times t minus phi naught plus a naught cos 2 pi by t plus omega naught times t plus phi naught plus now what will come next? Let me do it for a few terms for you. So, what I mean is, you see, you have taken the original sine wave as a continuous sine wave here. You have taken the next one. The next one is the sampling frequency in radians per second, 2 pi by t minus omega naught, and then the phase would be minus phi naught. Sampling frequency in radians plus omega naught plus phi naught. Now, the next term would be 2 times the sampling frequency in radians minus phi naught and the next term after that would be 2 pi by t times 2 plus phi naught. Let me write down two more terms to make the concept clear here. Let me write it down completely. You can keep on writing more and more terms. Anyway, we have got the basic idea. Now, the challenge before you is to prove that as you add more and more terms, you have a constructive interference at the point of sampling and a destructive interference at all points other than that of sampling. In other words, what I want you to prove in the challenge and let me write that down. Prove that this sum is constructive at the points of sampling. Now, 
that means t equal to n t and destructive at others. So, what is going to happen? As you add more and more terms, essentially this sum is going to become localized near the points of sampling. It is going to rise higher and higher. In fact, it is very easy to see that at the point of sampling, the sum is divergent. It would go towards infinity. We knew right in the beginning from the previous lecture that the samples are the same when they come from all of these sine waves. So, at the points of sampling, of course, constructive interference is obvious, because all the samples are the same. All the values, all the sine waves take the same values. The key thing is to prove that at other points, the sum is destructive. That means, as you add more and more and more and more terms, they all compete and cancel one another out. So, I leave this as a challenge to you and I give you a hint. You know, you will have to use trigonometric identities. You are summing up sine waves of the same amplitude of different frequencies. Use trigonometric identities and show and try and see what they are converging to, what that sum converges to. If you like, you could decompose a sine wave into a sum of two oppositely rotating complex numbers, as you often do. So, that is also acceptable. We will be dwelling on that idea in more detail later. They are called phasers. Anyway, for the moment, I am putting this before you as a challenge. Why I am saying this is because it tells you what happens when you sample. When you sample, what you are doing is essentially to create small pulses at the instance of sampling of value or strength equal to the sample value of the waveform at that point. At all other points, you essentially have a 0 signal. So, sampling means to replace a continuous signal by a train of pulses. 